Hello, my celestial beings. This is Mystic Storm here to clear a path to a new life with you. If you're new, welcome to the family and soul tribe. I pray that this weekly essence intuitive guidance reading blesses you and you're able to gain guidance for this week, okay? And if you're already a part of the celestial tribe, you already know the deal. We back with another one, okay? All right. So, y'all. Let me know how the lunar eclipse in Gemini treated you because baby took me clean out of here, okay? Really exposed some things that I personally need to work on. Um, I feel like a lot of people, uh, the collective, like I've been listening to a lot of other people, is really heavy on relationships, Okay, so this is, I feel like it, it really took a hit on our relationships. It can be the relationship within yourself because relationships within yourself uh, reflect relationships with other people. Okay, it takes work, right? Work, 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 work. It takes work to get those relationships intact, to find the balance that you need in order for you to progress and gain um insight okay so definitely some tower moments for me um definitely um highlighted my shadow self and exposed some things that i need to work on and with spirituality again we talk about the light and the dark um you know, the positive and the negative uh chaos destruction and love and light so when these things happen, when the darkness happens, it can be scary. It can be heartbreaking. But at the same time, it's like, okay, are we going to let this just completely end things? And sometimes we should. We should sever connections. We should uh, just leave things alone. But if they're worth working on, this is where you need to establish better boundaries, establish um, a better foundation in order for you to then rebuild and restructure so you can move forward, okay? So definitely some heavy energy. I, I'm pretty sure you all are feeling it as well. But um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what do you expect? This is the end of the year, end of a monumental year. And four is, um, we're in the universal four year 2020. It's all about foundation, laying this foundation. And I feel like with the moon, the Gemini full moon, it really illuminated some things that we needed uh, proof on. You know, last week, we um, not last week, the previous week, we talked about ruling out the real from the fake. Ruling out the real from the fake. Your intuition can tell you some things. OK, that you might not have proof on. And then I feel like the um, full moon illuminated those things and showed you the proof you needed. Now it's all about how are you going to deal with that? OK, we talked about mind over matter. We talked about it's all about how you react. I tell you right now, it was not pretty for me. OK, it was not pretty for me. Mind over matter went out the window, shadow self came out to play, ego came out to play, and it was, I mean, it was destructive. I'm not even going to lie. And hey, things we have to work on, things we have to build upon, things we have to learn and grow for, this is a part of the spiritual journey, all right? So with that being said, let's hop into the energy for this week. You know, sometimes the energy is potent and it just takes over and it is what it is. But I will say the planets are staying put. They chilling this week. So I feel like that's what we should do. We should chill and ground and prepare for the shifts that's happening because coming up after next week, we have December 21st, I believe. It should come up. Oh, it comes up the next Monday. 
but that's okay. We were preparing for that shift for that age of Aquarius shift. Okay. So this is a good time for us to reground, restructure, rebuild in order to prepare for that. Okay. So this week, the only real highlight will be the fourth quarter moon that's happening on Monday. Okay. And it's going to be in the sign of Virgo. All right. So this is very grounding energy, earth energy. The shadow side is, of this is being very um, overanalyzing, very, um, very perfectionism. So make sure you uh, pay attention to that. I would say just go with the flow this week. Be, be very light, okay? So looking at these aspects, the first thing that gets to me Huh. I'm looking at Chiron retrograde um, and Mars in the sign of Aries, the I am, you know, that's the ego, um, what we perceive to be, you know, and with Chiron retrograde and the ego, this is where we're taking hits. We're taking hits of who we identify ourselves to be. Um, we identify ourselves as maybe a hard worker, uh, a mother, a wife, um, you know, a provider, so things like that. And then I feel like we've been getting hit this year or hit during this um, full moon cycle as exposing our ego and exposing our deepest fears in order for us to work and heal from that, okay? With this Aries energy here, the Aries just is squared off with um, Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto. And I mean, you know, that's the, um, the self-development trio for me. But it's also relying in the seventh house, which uh, rules our partnerships. Okay? Our partnerships. So there's um, tension within who we identify ourselves to be and what what we can do in order to expand our relationships, you know, grow and mature in our relationships and transform our relationships. So I will say because um, Mars is in the 10th house, which is public image, <laughs> career and legacy. It's really just shining bright on this is what I perceive myself to be and, you know, working on that. You know, we are multifaceted beings and we can't just identify ourselves as one thing, okay? So really working on that as far as relationships, partnerships, it can be romantic, it can be platonic, business, anything like that. But really... um being aware of your ego during this week. You know, do you really have to prove yourself as much as you want to inside to to show people your worth, to show people that you are who you feel you are, you know? It doesn't have to be forceful. Again, speaking to myself as well, okay? it's I know it's hard out here. But, you know, this is the energy we're going with and that's, you know, we just have to be aware of it, okay? But I will say that Mars is also trying the sun and Sagittarius, okay? Both fire energy. So I feel like whatever you feel like you are, go out and do it. You don't have to sit up here and, and talk the talk. Just, well, walk it like you talk it. Okay, Migos. Okay, uh, I remember like maybe a month ago I heard that song and it just completely changed my energy from the first time I heard it. Walk it like you talk it, you know. Just just show them, just do it, and that will change everything. If you walk in your passion, then you know people ain't got to say nothing, you know, or you know you don't have to worry about people talking about you because you already doing what you're supposed to be doing. Period. OK, so just know that walking your truth, walking your passion, you know, that's your soul's mission. So <laughs> it's, it's I know I understand that, 
it's tough. It's a lot. It's a lot of squares. When I'm looking at the chart, it's a lot of squares. A lot of tension is going on. But at the same time, there's also, you know, some give and take with this energy. Okay. You know, you just, you just have to worry about you, you and yours at this point. No, you don't have to worry about other people. You know, it's me versus me. Um, I do want to go and talk about Venus. Venus in the sign of Scorpio, that deep, transformative, dark energy, that water energy that rules our emotions, okay? I will say that it's in the middle. It's in a sextile between the moon that is in Virgo at the time of the fourth quarter moon and then also in a sextile with Pluto. <sighs> So I feel like when it comes to love, self-love, partnership love, because it's also because Pluto is in the seventh house when it uh, rules partnerships. And then the moon is in the third house, which is like communication, you know, community. So I feel like we're, you know, lightening up our load a little bit, trying to figure out how we can better communicate our feelings and express ourselves when we're hurt, you know, when we're down, when we don't feel like things are, you know, going the way that we would like them to or how we would perceive them to be. So I feel like with this um, Venus energy, it is softening the blow towards the tension that we have felt from previous weeks, okay? And with the moon here, it's, it is trying Pluto. It is trying Pluto. So your feelings that are lightening up, that is showing compassion, showing more love, is helping you transform your partnerships, helping you transform your relationships to build that foundation. Because Pluto is still in Capricorn. That's the GOAT. That's the goal. Steady climbing, steady building towards your goals, okay? You know, we we fall in, you know, dark times and we feel like that's it. But we have to know that that's life. That's life. We, we can't just, you know, throw in a towel. You know, I got a message. I was asking Spirit, like, what should I do about this certain situation? And I heard, let go, let go. And it shook me up because it was just like, dang, so I'm just supposed to walk away. I'm supposed to do this. But I really, now I realize that letting go is detaching from the situation, letting go of control. Mm. I know it's hard. <laughs> I know it's hard. Letting go of control because the unknown is the unknown. We don't know what is up next. We have a plan, but that doesn't mean it's gonna pan out that way. And we just have to have faith that what our intentions we want will manifest. What is ours cannot be taken from us, okay? So keeping that in mind, you know, letting go of control, letting go of this lack mindset and being in resistance, okay? I will say the moon is squared off with um, Mercury and um, the sun, which are in Sagittarius. So with this tension of communication, with this tension of uh, expressing ourselves uh, to others um, not in an egotistic way. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because, you know, people put a lot of um, a lot of um, shame upon being an ego. You know, the ego is here for a purpose. Everything in life is here for a purpose. So I feel like how we express our emotions is going to be based on how we feel, how we perceive ourselves to be. You know, if you are, if you might feel attacked, then of course you're going to, you know, express that and put your guard up. That's you being in protective mode. 
So it's just like, don't, every energy is here for a reason. And don't, don't um, feel bad in, in a sense of if you, if things don't pan out the way that you want them to, or if you slip up and cuss somebody out because that's your shadow self and that's a part of you and that's a learning lesson that's a that's just a learning lesson it's just it's just growing pains it's a part of life so yeah and i will say the sun here is trying not trying squared off with neptune and neptune in pisces is opposition the moon so <laughs> with our who we define ourselves to be is not lining up with i'm hearing our destiny okay you know um uh, pisces energy is that water sign is that very intuitive sign uh this is very also an addictive sign this is where our escapism is our fantasies lie so i feel like who we envision ourselves to be we're in a constant battle of um a lack of self-discipline is what I'm hearing, you know, um, definitely working on what we should, um, be and, you know, who we perceive ourselves to be knife house energy with the Neptune is all about philosophy. So really working on ourselves as far as, uh, our spirituality. So we might have, um, tension there between who we perceive ourselves to be, you know, how people view us versus what we really believe in what's our um, morals what's you know who we are behind closed doors there's a, a battle there so i feel like this week you should uh definitely sit and ground yourself and try to figure out what it is you truly want what it is you truly want and that's going to be hard because is neptune is opposition the moon the moon is all about our emotions it's all about our emotions. So it's definitely highlighting, you know, how we feel about certain beliefs, letting go of those toxic traits, letting go of the escapism and doing what we need to do in order to move forward. Okay. So, I mean, hey, <laughs> I, oh, I will say um, the moon is trying or preparing to try and Uranus retrograde, of course, in Taurus, as we talked about. And uh, Black Moon Lilith is conjunct, I believe. Uranus has to be. Yeah, it's conjunct. Black Moon Lilith comes out to play. And this is some spontaneous energy here. So anything, your deepest, darkest desires, it can be very, very uh, random very random so pay attention to that your deepest darkest desires are going to pop up uh this week especially since black moon lilith is conjunct um uranus retrograde you don't know what's going to pop up and it could be for the good you know for your better good you never know like some ideas because uranus represents genius also in the black moon astrology cards so you might get a lot of thoughts that can help you move forward in your ascension Okay, or some things might pop off because of your deepest desires to test you. you. You never know. But with this trine here, with this trine with the moon, I feel like it will be an easygoing, softer energy. It's not a lot of tension here. So I feel like it should be on like the smoother part of the waters. Okay, so this is what we have for the astrology. I hope you all um get some insight from that we're gonna hop into the cards here for the week you know just gonna do something light here i'm just gonna t i feel like now i'm getting more um momentum with the weekly essences i'm trying to just make them more chill because i mean it's during the week we just need to know the energies and we just need to know <laughs> how we can, you know, move forward. It doesn't have to be, be in that um, very, 
um, perfectionism energy because I can be in that sometimes. So I'm just trying to go with the flow. Look at that throat chakra right there. Just expressing yourself, just being authentic, you know. So let's pull some cards and see how it goes. What's the energy for this week, spirit? That throat chakra is still right there. I see you. <laughs> okay. Victory and success. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Then we have wisdom. Seeing that wisdom. Huh. Whew. Foundation and achievements. I'm going to pull two more. Sacrifice, hangman, energy in reverse. And disruption, tower. All right. And shadow at the bottom of the deck in reverse. So first off, I'm going to say victory and success. Um, wisdom. And then we have foundation and achievements. Six, five, four. Okay. Okay. Six, five, four. That's a synchronicity right there. So, um, definitely know we probably need to take some steps back in order to figure out what it, what we need to do in order to continue to build. Okay. With this victory and success, this was, this is a long road, a long road to reach to the top. So the spirit is saying that this success, this victory is yours. It's yours. But you have to continue during this climb up, continue to work on your balance to gain harmony, right? There's some, there's victory and success here, but there's also trauma here as well. You know, uh, that's just like somebody coming back from war. Somebody coming back from war. So when they come back from war, yes, they're seen as the hero, but all that battle that they had to do to get to the top, that affects them. That affects them deeply. So knowing that, yes, your success is there, but also know that you have to tend to yourself in order to heal, you know, the trauma to get to the top, okay? How would you do this? Because you've learned. You've learned. You have the wisdom. You have the knowledge to go forth. Okay. Um, this is also saying making sure that you you might want to um, take up some new studies, read some new books, research some new topics in order to help you in this ascension process. Okay. Um, definitely, um, we talked about relationships. You might want to um, pick up a relationship book. Or watch some relationship videos or listen to a podcast. Something like that. Because there's a family here. There's a family here right there. And then with the four of wands here, that's foundation and achievements. That's the family. You're trying to build something in order for it to be stable. In order for it to be secure. And yes, it's yours. It is yours. This foundation that you're building, you're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're going to be victorious in that. But at the same time, yes, there's trauma. Yes, there's shadow um, aspects. Yes, there's things that are going to hold, like hold you back. But you can't let them. You can't let them do that because you deserve so much more. You deserve this happy ending. You deserve this happy ending. So though you, it took a long time to get to the top and don't let your past, mm, don't let your past mess up what you're trying to build. Again, talking to myself here as well. <laughs> All right. And sacrifice here in reverse hangman energy. This is talking about being stagnant. Okay, being stagnant. So um, I feel like, hmm, I don't really see this as a bad thing right now. Um, 
<laughs> but I say that and then there's the tower here, the disruption. So if you feel if there's some stagnant energy here, spirit is going to come come with the tower to knock you off so you can release. But with this victory, victory and success with this wisdom and foundation and achievement, I really do feel like this stagnant energy is here to just keep you grounded, to keep you grounded. And the tower is just like, how many towers are we going to have? <laughs> how many towers are we going to have? So um, this disruption, this change that's happening Huh. It's because you won't let go. It's because you won't let go. Because you see, it's like this person just holding on, clinging. And I told you about how it's, uh, Spirit said let go. Not in a sense that you have to walk away, you have to break up, you have to do all this stuff. But let go of control. If you don't let go of control, this is where you are going to be stuck and stagnant. And then you're going to have another tower. And it's just going to be like, we're going to keep having these towers until you learn your lesson. Until you learn your lesson. And it's just like the foundation that you're building on is just going to keep weakening and weakening and weakening until it breaks. Until it breaks down. So it's just like, are you going to trust? Are you going to trust spirit? Are you going to trust the unknown? Are you going to have faith? Are you going to have hope? And, you know, put, bring, put your wisdom, you know, your wisdom is being put to the test. Are you going to uh, practice what you preach? Are you going to practice what you studied? Are you going to implement these things so you can go ahead and have this victory and success? It's hard. It's hard and we have to go through these lessons in order for us to really get to the top. Really get to the top. That's it. That's just it. So I want to pull from the Queen of the Moon Oracle. Especially since we're still in that releasing phase. Releasing phase. And close out here. Yeah, what is the final message for the collector for this week? This weekly energy. New moon. We're approaching a new moon. And it says beginnings. Opening up the doors. Going from this cold, dark, space to this new bright future ahead of us this is literally clearing the path to a new life okay so with this uh beginnings here this is and it's the number two it's the number two that's that balance that's also partnerships as well um so beginnings i feel like you know if you've had tension within partnerships had tension within yourself fighting you know, with anxiety and all these things, I feel like there's going to be clarity. There's going to be a renewal uh, during this time and that um, you all will open up to see a better future. Okay, so this is what I have for you for the Weekly Essence. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next one. I hope that you all um, definitely... Um, I should have said this in the beginning, but, you know, if you still at the end, you the real MVP, okay? But definitely uh, check out my Instagram channel, MysticStorm333. Uh, I'm starting to go live on there more so we can have more, uh, um, more connection, more personal connection. So, you know, hit me up. So I would love to see you all in uh, the live chats on Instagram and between now and then I will see you in the next one. Bye.